Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at Godfarer's Gift. This was actually tied with the Solemnity vote, but I ended up featuring both, so it just goes to show that every vote matters. So Godfarer's Gift, a 7 mana rare artifact that says at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard, and if you do create a token, that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie, and it also gains haste until end of turn. So just as a side note, this does sidestep Gravedigger's Cage, which is probably one of the more popular graveyard hate options in Historic at the moment, as it also shuts down Collected Company and any Bolas' Citadel shenanigans as well as Muxus. So Gravedigger's Cage is going to be in a lot of sideboards, and since Godfarer's Gift exiles a creature and then brings it back instead of going straight from the graveyard to the battlefield, it does circumvent Gravedigger's Cage, which is pretty nice. So how are we getting Godfarer's Gift onto the battlefield if it's 7 mana that's pretty expensive? Well, that's where Gate to the Afterlife life comes in handy, the 3 mana uncommon artifact that says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you gain one life and then you may draw a card and if you do discard a card, and for 2 mana we can tap the gate and sacrifice it to search your graveyard hand or library for a card named Godfur's Gift and put it onto the battlefield, but we can only activate this ability if there are 6 or more creatures in our graveyard, so the goal of the deck is to find gate to the afterlife, fill our graveyard with creatures and then sacrifice a gate to find a Godfur's Gift, which can then reanimate all those creatures that are now in our graveyard. And as you'll notice, besides Gate and Godfur's Gift, our entire deck is creatures and lands, so we've got a pretty high chance of finding some creatures if we end up milling ourselves to enable our Gate to the Afterlife. And then one of the more exciting creatures to reanimate with Godfarer's Gift is Combat Celebrant. We don't even have red mana in our mana base to hardcast a Combat Celebrant, but we've got a few ways to mill it or to discard it from our hand if it's stuck there to still get it back with Godfarer's Gift. And Combat Celebrant is a 3 mana for one Mythic Rare Human Warrior, and if Combat Celebrant hasn't been exerted this turn, you can exert it as it attacks, and if we do, untap all other creatures we control and after this phase there is an additional combat phase and exert of course means that if a creature is exerted it won't untap during its next untap step so combat celebrant gives us an additional attack step which is pretty nice with godfar's gift because godfar's gift triggers at the beginning of combat so if we get an additional combat phase we also get an additional godfar's gift trigger to make an additional 4-4 zombie so we can essentially chain together as many combat celebrants as we have in our graveyard and then afterwards still get an additional 4-4 zombie so we can assemble a pretty nice army of 4-4 zombies that can keep attacking and then another exciting reanimation target for Godfarer's Gift is a Dracoseth Maw of Flames, another card that we can't really hardcast in this deck, but we get a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon with flying, and whenever Dracoseth attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets. And of course Dracoseth is going to turn into a 4-4 zombie with flying, but it will still retain that powerful ability that can deal 10 damage divided among 3 different targets, which is what we're interested in. So Dracoseth makes for an excellent removal spell and also a way to finish out the game. So these are some of the more exciting reanimation targets, but let's take a look at the rest of the deck to see how the deck operates, because we do only have the 4 copies of Gate to the Afterlife, so if we don't have it in our opening hand, how do we end up finding it? Well, of course we've got 4 copies of Emery, Lurker of the Lock, a 3 mana 1-2 legendary Merfolk Wizard, that costs 1 less to cast for each artifact we control, so it also synergizes with Gate to the Afterlife, and when Emery enters the battlefield we mill our top 4 cards, so that also helps fill the graveyard for Gate, and then we can tap Amory and choose an artifact card in our graveyard that we can cast this turn. So if we happen to mill a gate to the afterlife, we can also get it back with Amory from the graveyard. So that essentially gives us access to roughly 8 copies of gate to the afterlife in our deck, since we've got so many mill effects to fill the graveyard. And Amory can also help us get back a gate to the afterlife after we've already sacrificed it to get a second copy of Godfather's Gift. So we can end the game in a hurry getting 2 triggers at the beginning of each combat step. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana, we've got a full playset of Murfolk Secret Keeper, a creature that counts for Gate to the Afterlife, but we can use the Sorcery Adventure first to mill the top 4 cards of our library. And then Stitcher Supplier, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one zombie that when it enters a battlefield or dies, mills 3 cards. And it also synergizes quite nicely with our Phyrexian Tower, which can function as a sacrifice outlet, generating additional mana, and also helping us put more cards in the graveyard with Stitcher Supplier. And then we've got 4 copies of Stone Cold Serpent, which might seem like a strange inclusion in this deck, but it does play a few different roles. First off, we can play it for 1 mana to enable a turn 2 Emery, which can speed up the process. 
And then if we already have a Gate to the Afterlife in play, we can also play Stone Cold Serpent for zero mana, which will essentially die right away, triggering the Gate's ability to gain one and then draw and discard. So not only are we putting an extra Serpent in the graveyard to enable Gate, but we also get to draw and discard, potentially putting an extra Komod Celebrant in the graveyard to then uh, get back with the Godfather's Gift once we transform the Gate. And we can also get back Stone Cold Serpent with Emery for zero mana if we have a Gate to the Afterlife in play just to enable it, or for larger amounts if we want access to a big reach creature. And if we reanimate Stone Cold Serpent with Godfather's Gift, it will be a 4-4 zombie with reach and trample, so it doesn't matter that it doesn't have any counters on it. And then at 2 mana we've got 4 copies of Brain Maggot, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one enchantment creature insect that when it enters a battlefield makes the opponent reveal their hand and we can choose a non-land card from it and exile that card until Brain Maggot leaves the battlefield. Now this might also seem like a weird inclusion, this card used to be Mire Triton beforehand, since that card has a lot of inherent synergy it helps us fill the graveyard and provide a nice blocker. But I ended up facing the Core Spirit Dancer Aura deck a few too many times, as well as the Goblin deck. And against those decks you really need to be able to disrupt the opponent's game plan, and Brain Maggot is one of the most effective ways to do it at a cheap mana cost, as we get to take a look at the opponent's hand, maybe strip away a Core Spirit Dancer if we're on the play, or take away a key aura if we're on the draw. And against the Goblin deck we can take away a card like Krenko or Muxus, which can slow down the opponent long enough for us to take over with our Godfather's Gift. And that's also the main philosophy behind Brain Maggot. Because our late game is so powerful and the more turns we get with an active God for his gift, the more likely we are to win the game. We just want to be able to interact with the opponent as quickly as possible. And Brain Maggot helps us with that game plan. And of course if we bring it back with God for his gift, we maybe get to snoop around the opponent's hand a second time. And then at 3 mana we also have the full playset of Champion of Wits, another new card from Amoncat Remastered, a 2-1 Naga Wizard that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw cards equal to its power and if we do discard 2 cards. So assuming the opponent doesn't mess with our Champion of Wits by reducing its power at instant speed, we get to draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards. So that's another way for us to discard cards like Combat Celebrant and Dracoseth and fill the graveyard for our Gate to the Afterlife. And then once we do bring back Champion of Wits with our Godfather's Gift, it will come back as a 4-4, which means we get to draw 4 cards and then discard 2 cards, so that's another nice source of card advantage. And we can also eternalize the Champion of Wits for 7 mana from the graveyard, which means we exile it from the graveyard and make a 4-4 zombie with the same ability. So it's very similar to bringing it back with a Godfather's Gift trigger, although it doesn't happen very often. And then we've got our 4 Emery's, 4 Celebrants, 4 Gates, 2 Dracoseth and 2 Godfather's Gift. And then going over the mana base, we've got 4 copies of Ipnu Rivulet, another new addition from Amoncat Remastered. We can pay 2 mana, tap it and sacrifice a desert, and Ipnu Rivulet is the only desert in our deck. And then target player mills 4 cards, so we can target ourselves to potentially fill the graveyard some more for our Gate to the Afterlife and Godfather's Gift. And then we've got 3 basic islands, 3 copies of Phyrexian Tower, which is also very important, especially alongside Stitcher Supplier as we mentioned, and can give us that one additional mana to potentially play and activate Gate to the Afterlife in the same turn, which can make a big difference. But because it's legendary we can only run 3 copies, otherwise I would easily run all 4. And then 6 swamps, 4 drowned catacombs and 4 watery graves. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn one supplier, turn two brain maggots, hopefully draw third lands. Otherwise we can sack supplier to the Phyrexian Tower to make one more mana. Not the best mill three. So our opponent on a black green deck with Lenor Elves could be a Bolas Citadel plus Collected Company deck. Alright, maybe not. Abzan and the Paradise Druids plus a Goose. So plenty of ramp, maybe we can take away their payoff card with a Brain Maggot here. And yep, there's a Company as well as Lurus, but Company seems more important to take. Alright, so we've got some options this turn. I think I want to sacrifice Supplier once I already have Gate in play, so we'll just play the Gate normally this turn. And then next turn I can play 2 mana Emery, plus maybe sack Supplier, play some other stuff. Pretty far from activating the Gates, since there's no creatures in the graveyard yet. 
We'll take three. Alright. Two combat celebrants for us to discard potentially. So let's see here. Yeah, I think we do start by sacking Supplier. Because I need both blue mana for Secret Keeper and Emery, so I need to do this first. Alright, not bad. Get to draw on discards, discard a Celebrant, play two mana Emery. And there's a chance I can just activate a gate right now. And yeah, I think that's six creatures. I guess I can still mill myself for four firsts. And Dracoseth should be pretty strong too here. So let's search for library for gifts. And then I can get back one celebrant, make that two celebrants, followed by a Dracoseth. And our opponent concedes, so we were going to get to attack, exert the Cruel Celebrant, get another Godfather's Gift trigger, get a second Celebrant. Now the first one will still be tapped, but after we exert a second Celebrant, that also untaps the first one, despite being exerted, so it can attack on the third Godfather's Gift attack. And then Dracoseth comes back, decimates the opponent's board, and we should be able to win the game on the following turn. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got Gate in hand, plus Emery for a bit of redundancy. It's gonna be a slow hand on the draw, no early play, but hopefully uh, we can still get there. Turn Firebrand probably means an aggressive red deck, more than Goblins. Another sideways monkey, as it's referred to. And Square Prospector, alright, never mind, so it is goblins after all. Supplier's a nice draw. Mills two creatures. Could technically already see Muxus here, but it's gonna be a Snoop. Finds a mountain on top. Opponent helping us out, killing the supplier. Alright, so we've got five creatures in the graveyard already. Yeah, we'll play the gate, and then next turn I can play two mana Emery and still have two mana to activate gates. There's not too many abrades being played right now, so we don't need to fear artifact removal. And Goblin Ringleader finds Matron and Gem Palm. So I'm going to take six. Don't have an amazing graveyard, no Celebrants or Dracoseths, but maybe Emery can find one. And there's a Celebrant, although I don't have a way of discarding it at the moment. Let's play Emery. Just need to mill one creature here, I believe. So I do get to search up a gift, but it's not going to be backbreaking just yet. I get to return a Champion of Wits, draw for discard two, discard Celebrant for next turn. Hopefully find another Celebrant or Dracoseth. Uh, 
All right, there we go. And we'll stay back. Don't need to attack just yet. They can kill my 4-4 with the Jump Palm. Or they could try and set up something with the Goblin Matron. This might get a Muxus, which they can play thanks to the Prospector. And our opponent's gonna hope to hit a Haste Enabler. Uh, they're gonna cycle Jump Palm still. If they don't kill Emery, I can get a second gift by uh, getting the gate back from the graveyard. Assuming I still have six creatures, but I think I do since I discarded two of them. So, opponent does go after Emery. But I now get to kill the Prospector. Alright, so is there anything else I can do pre-combots? I guess uh, Champion of Wits discarding the Celebrant. So we've got an extra Celebrant to get back first. And then Bray Maggot can get Moxus, but we can do that second main. So I'll get back double Celebrant, followed by Dracoseth. And it's always nice when the opponent doesn't have any creatures that can eat your 4-4s. Four if they have like a 5-5 five, five or a 6-6 six, six on defense, they get to block and kill one of your 4-4s four right away, making your attacks a lot less exciting. But that's not the case against the goblins. And discard Celebrants and I guess Champion. And then we'll move to combats. Get a combat Celebrant. Suppose they could have another Gem Palm in hand, and then kill the Celebrant by also then sacking the Firebrand afterwards. But it doesn't appear to be the case. Opponent is processing everything that's happening right now. Probably hasn't seen this interaction before. Now, because the Celebrant can't exert if it's already exerted, this isn't an infinite loop. It's not like we get to take infinite attack steps with two Celebrants. But we do still get to untap the original Celebrant so it can attack again. Opponent's finally gonna trade. They probably should have traded the first time around. And now Dracoseth should be lethal. So the Brain Maggot for Noxus wasn't even necessary. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. So we've got a Gate and a Brain Maggot. Just need to draw into some more mill effects or we can use the Rivulets. Alright, so an Arclight Phoenix deck. Probably want to take the only removal spell they have. Young Pyromancer is also pretty nice with Of One Mind, since it can potentially be cast for one mana. But yeah, let's take the Shock. Young Pyromancer into Of One Mind. And our draws have been pretty abysmal so far. So I'll have to maybe play Gate number two. That way if I jump with a Brain Maggot I'll get two Gate triggers at least. Could have also opted to just mill myself with the Rivulets. But sacking a land at this point is kind of painful. 
Could see a hard cast Arclight Phoenix. Gonna start with an opt. Opponent is going off. And they're gonna get back an Arclight Phoenix. Pretty happy to jump with a Brain Maggot here. But our draws are just very bad. So even if I hit four creatures with a Rivulet, it's still not enough to transform gates, and I'm taking nine on the way back. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Finally a hand without Gate to the Afterlife. So, of course having Emery as a backup is still a fine keep. If we don't have Emery or Gates, then usually it means we should mulligan, although sometimes if we have a champion of wits we can still make it work as a champion can draw us towards Emery and Gate. But here we can go turn to Brain Maggot, turn three Emery, and look for a Gate. And our opponent on the Famish Paladin Presence of Gaunt combo deck. I've got that one in the works as well. Um, well, I guess we'll take Presence since we can't take away both Paladins. So if they have a way to gain life, like a Soul Warden in play, then whenever they tap the Paladin with a Presence on it to make a 1-1 token, they get to gain one with the Soul Warden untap the Paladin and essentially gain infinite life and make infinite tokens. Haven't found a gate, but we did find a gift in case we go all the way up to 7 mana, although it's probably going to be too slow. Alright, so... Could just play a big stone coil as a blocker, can play champion of wits and give us a few extra looks. And then I can still play a 1-1 stone coil if needed. Although I kind of want to keep Stone Cold in the graveyard. So let's just start with Champion of Wits. Yeah, let's just discard Stone Coil in a land and then we can play more Emery's next turn. Do I still play a 1 1 Stone Coil here? I don't think I do. I guess I might as well attack. Can they gain one life here? Probably not. They did name green with banner, so they're probably not playing March of the Multitudes, just naming green because the tokens from Presence are green. So we still know most of their hands, two copies of Pride of Conquerors, which is a pump spell. And there's a Janice Welcome, so that can also combo with the Paladin. So if they top deck Presence of Gond or get rid of my Bray Maggots. They get to make infinite life, which we probably can beat, because we are going to end up decking first. And of course, infinite tokens will kill us as well. Take three for now. And then I'll play an Emery. And then I want to keep the original Emery, so we can still potentially get something back from the graveyard. Hope to mill a gate. Ah, there's a gate, so now I can use Tower, Sacrifice, Champion of Wits, and get back my gate, which we can then transform next turn. And what can I get back? Comet Celebrant followed by Champion of Wits. Opponent is top decking. 
Hopefully no presence. Anoint for Priest, yep. I'm also playing that one in my builds as another way to gain life, and if it dies you can embalm it. So it's pretty nice against removal. Opponent's got 9 permanents, so not quite enough for the city's blessing here. Alright, can also play Stone Cold for 0. Uh, let's see. I think I start my turn... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I could even get back a Godfarer's Gift, but then I can't use a gate, so that's kind of pointless. So I think I start by just playing another Emery. Keeping the original. Hope to find Dracoseth or another Comet Celebrants. We'll just play Stone Cold for zero. To get another draw and discard. There's no window for me to sack it to the Phyrexian Tower, if you're wondering. Sacrifice Ditcher Supplier to Phyrexian Tower. And then I can still draw in discards in the hopes of randomly drawing another Comet Celebrant or Dracoseth. And then Emery can get back another Stone Cold that I can play for zero, just to get another Gate Trigger before we sacrifice it. Alright, and then it's time to get uh, Godfarer's Gifts. I think we've got one left in Library. And then I have... A few Comet Celebrants I can get back, followed by probably a Champion of Wits. Can also use Emery's ability once again, which I guess is relevant since I can play a 1 1 Stone Coil afterwards. It's more relevant if we had another Gates in play. Now my opponent will still be able to top deck another Presence at any point and kill me. So... Alright, opponent casts Pride, not sure why. And we'll get back Champion of Wits. Could also get another Brain Maggot to take the Pride of Conquerors, but that doesn't seem necessary. Right, there's Dracoseth for next turn. And we'll attack. Maybe I should leave back one blocker. Sure. And then... I guess I can still play my land for the turn two, although it's a Phyrexian Tower, so it's not super useful. Let's just play 1 1 Stone Coil. And pass a turn. Alright, did they draw it? They did not, and our opponent explodes. Dracoseth was easily gonna seal the deal next turn. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's not amazing. I'm missing a few mill effects, but I do have turn 2 Brain Maggot, turn 3 Gate, so I'll still keep. Facing turn 1 Gilded Goose. And double priest, double paradise druid, so this brain maggot's not looking too great here. 
I guess it doesn't matter what I take. And Drakaseth to draw. Right, I can play Gate, and now if they activate Priest, at least I get to loot with Gate. And the Mayhem Duffel. Pretty effective against my gates and my Fraxian Tower as well, which will enable the Devil. Alright, let's start by milling for four. And I can already transform the gate. Wow, we hit six creatures. That's lucky. So yeah, let's use the gate now. I can't really play the Bray Maggot here because it's gonna die to the Mayhem Devil trigger. And then search for a library for a gift. Bring back Drakuseth. Well, this game highlighted the importance of having a lot of creatures in your deck. And yeah, I'm not sure how our opponent's supposed to beat an active Godfur's gift here. Could have played Bray Maggot by sacking Drakuseth, but I'll keep my Drakuseth. And the air opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty decent hands and facing Kahira. So this could be the Crater Hoof Tokens deck or this could be a control deck just playing Kahira as a free roll. In which case having two gates is nice if they are gonna thought seize me. And looks more like the Tokens deck so far. I could play turn 2 gates thanks to Phyrexian Tower, but I'm probably gonna wait. Alright, never mind, maybe it's Cat Tribal. That also makes sense. So, we can play a 2-2 Stone Coil. No blue mana for Emery just yet. Green-white Cat Tribal. Cultivates. Cat Tribal did pick up a few new toys in Among Cats with Pride Sovereign and Regal Caracal. So those are cards my opponent could have. And I could take a look with Brain Maggots. I think I still would just want to get Gate in play. Because with the Dracoseth in hand I can probably take care of any cats my opponent plays. As long as we can find Godfar's Gifts. There's Feline Sovereign, uh oh, that uh, does destroy artifacts. So I guess I'll double block. Alright, so can probably ditch the island here. And then I can play Emery and still sacrifice Gates, which can get back a Dracoseth. Or I can take a look with Brain Maggots. But if I get Emery down now, next turn I can get back a second uh, Gift. Assuming I draw land, I guess. Or I sacrifice something to the tower. No Komod Celebrin, so we'll go straight for Dracoseth. So even if they get rid of my gifts, I can next turn... 
play Gate, sacrifice Emery to sacrifice Gate and get another gift. A Wrath of God, that's fine. So I guess I can just uh, get a second God first gift now. And we're gonna get some value with Champion Wits. And that can discard the Brain Maggot so I can reanimate it, or a Combat Celebrant, I guess. So, this should just kill my opponent. Could take a look at their hands to see what else they were working with. There's a Pride Sovereign. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No Emery, no Gates, no Champion of Wits. This is gonna be a mulligan. Alright, there's an Emery, so this I can keep. And then I probably bottom the Drunker Seth because I don't have a way of discarding it at the moment. And Stone Cold helps me play turn 2 Emery, which seems important. Facing a Temple of Triumph. Right. Didn't find a gate. Did find a gift, but that's pretty far away. Dreadhorde Arcanist, so a Feather deck. So next turn we could see a Reckless Rage take out my Emery. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. And there's a gate. If I had a Phyrexian Tower I would be able to play it right now, but sadly I don't. Alright, no removal for Emery one time. Solemnity, that's fine. I guess that stops future Stonequill Serpents. I guess if they also have a 9 lives, that probably shuts me out of the game. They might be playing the Mothra combo with the Firebrand. Yeah, if they play Mothra next turn, Firebrand can essentially ping me to death. So, well, I guess we want to try and get back this Dracoseth. Which I can maybe with the help of Emery. Keep the original. Find another Gates. So Emery can get back Stone Coil. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can already activate Gates. But I guess I might as well. Just in the hopes of finding a Comet Celebrant. Champion of Wits seems fine, although I can also discard it. Alright, let's get a Drunkoseth. Could also go for Brain Maggot, but if I kill the Firebrand, then the Brood Moth doesn't matter too much.
Do they have a God's Willing maybe to protect the Firebrand? Nope. Alright, hopefully no 9 lives. Alright, GG's. Chance for glory. Take an extra turn. Opponent may be going out in a blaze of glory. Or do they have the Brood Moth? Alright. That's the combo right there. Well, did not expect Chance for Glory to take an extra turn. But here we are. So it's possible that bringing back Bray Maggots to take a look at their hands would have been the winning play. Alright, we know how this one ends. GG's. So yeah, there's a few ways you can combo with the Brood Moth, and that is one of them. So overall, got some nice games in with our God Pharaoh's Gift. Pretty important to have an opening hand that has a gate or at least an emery in it, so you do need to mulligan pretty aggressively for those, otherwise you might be in a bit of trouble. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.